Hey, welcome back. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Evan. I'm a personal trainer and this is my channel where I talk about health, fitness, and other fun stuff. So thank you again for joining me. Today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit more about, you know, why do we put on weight and why is it so hard to take off? I'm going to get into all of that in this video and uh, let's go ahead and get on into it. Why do we put on weight? Now, this could be a multiple amount of reasons, and I'm just going to go over some of the more common reasons why. So here we go. Number one, we're eating more calories than we think we do. So we're overestimating how much we're actually eating. Now, this is actually pretty common. Uh, when we're out and about, or even when we're buying food, we're not looking, for, the average person isn't looking for how many calories does this have? Oh my goodness, does it have enough protein? Does it have enough carbs? Ooh, I need to stay away from the fat, I have a lot of fat. No. When we see food, it's like, oh, I want to eat this today, I'm going to eat it. And then you go home, you cook it, and you eat it. Or if you're even feeling like a lazy piece of crap, like me sometimes, you're gonna go to a fast food joint because you're like, I'm in the mood for, well, I'm hungry, I'm gonna go get something. Or if you're even lazier than that, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna order on Postmates, DoorDash, whatever, I'm not sponsored by any of them. And uh, you're gonna have what you're gonna have. Like, huh, I want sushi, huh, I want McDonald's, hmm, I want B-dubs. You don't know how many calories you're actually eating, you're just, knowing that you're hungry and you want your hunger to be fulfilled. And you don't even realize how many calories you're actually consuming. Why is this a problem? That it's not necessarily or what we should be eating and what we shouldn't be eating, but I think we should just be more aware of what we're putting in our bodies. So as far as with food, you should know like how many calories are in food and you may be surprised. That food that you got at that restaurant, let's just say, oh, I got some wings. Well, the wings are probably cooked in oil and oil has a lot of fat, which has a higher amount of calories than protein and carbs. Not only are you getting protein in that, but you're also getting um, the fats, not only from the meat, but also from the uh, oil that it was cooked in. So it's going to be a lot higher in calories than you actually suspect to be. So even though you're feeling full, you're and satisfied, you've actually eaten a lot more calories than what your body uh, needs in order to maintain the weight that it's actually at. So that can be a reason why you're gaining weight. Another way that you might be consuming more calories than you th than you actually should be in order to maintain or even lose weight is that eat, let's just say that you are eating healthier, um, you are having more fruits and vegetables and solid meals, but then you snack throughout the day because those meals that you're having aren't as satiating as they should be. You're not as full as you want to be or you're not as satisfied with your meal afterwards. So while you're going throughout the day, you're snacking. And this actually happens a lot with people who don't actually eat meals throughout the day. They end up just kind of grazing and picking food all day. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with you eating the, or like with your eating style. But what I do got to say is that what I tend to see what happens is when people graze more and they snack more and they're not hungry for the actual meals, they're actually consuming more calories because of the snacks that they snack on. Let's just say that you're like, oh, I had a few cookies here and I had a few cookies there, like chocolate covered almonds. So you're consuming or and you have chips. Chips is another big one that I see that people like to snack on. That's a big go to. Right. So you're doing that or you just like, you're like, oh, I'm going to have a little piece of chocolate here and a little piece of candy there. All these snacks, even though they're like small little bite sized stuff, if you're having them constantly throughout the day, they add up really quickly. So you're like, oh, well, I barely ate today. Well, what you ate is actually high in calories. So you're actually still going over the calorie limit that you consume. Now, another thing is that it's drinking your calories. This is another, this is another big one. They tend to put on weight quicker or it's hard for them to lose weight because of the calories that they don't know that they're consuming. So beverages being another one. Now I like myself a beer. I like myself to have a cocktail every once in a while, just like every other adult. Um, but also you got to keep in mind, how much are you consuming? Alcohol, for every gram of alcohol, there is seven calories. So that is still higher than protein and carbs as far as the calorie to gram ratio, 
um, but it's still a little bit lower than fats, but not by much. So fat is at nine calories per gram. Alcohol is at seven calories per gram. And then proteins and fats are four calories per gram. So that kind of gives you a field of uh, where your calories are coming from. As far as if you're drinking your calories, if you're having beers, if you're having alcohol and you like, you tend to like to have a lot more for a nightcap, which I don't recommend because you might go to sleep faster, but you're not going to have a great quality of sleep, just like in my video that I posted a while ago. Anyways, um, so that is one thing. So it's like if you're a person that enjoys your wine, there's nothing wrong with having a glass of wine at night. So if you're having two glasses and when I mean by two glasses, I mean by the ones that are like humongous and then you're filling it up to the brim and you're just like, I'm just having a nightcap. No, we know what you're doing. Like you might have the relaxing and having a nightcap. Having one is okay. But like when you're having more than one because you need to feel like you need to sleep and relax, there's better ways that you can do that. You don't need that much. So um, that's a lot of calories right there. You, you're drinking your calories in those two humongous glasses of wine. Have your glass of wine. It's great. Wine is like having a glass of wine is nice to have, but you don't need to have excessive amount, especially if you're wondering why you're gaining all this weight or why you can't uh, put the weight off. And for those of you who like Starbucks, the most basic coffee shop. Uh, yeah, I said it. I don't care. It's cool. I have coffees from there sometimes. My girlfriend, she swears by it. That's her. That's her church. OK, that's her. she worships Starbucks so much. She loves their lattes and iced coffees. She's got to have them. And you know what? Bless her heart, she can have her iced coffee. But I'm just gonna tell you this right now. When you go and you get your iced coffee, the creamer and the sh and the sugar additives that they have in it, you could be consuming a lot more calories than you think. So I'm gonna put somewhere up um, how many calories are in a coffee from Starbucks if you're just getting a latte or if you're getting an iced coffee. There's, there's ways that you can make it a little bit lower calorie if you want to you can make it kind of like a, i think they call it a skinny i guess skinny latte or skinny i don't know but you can make it uh you could lower the calories on it but also understand that if you're having the coffees iced coffees lattes and you're having it with the cream and sugar it's going to be a lot more calories than you actually think and that's another reason why you may not be uh, losing weight or if you've gained weight and yeah so um those are, again, the hidden calories, the calories in your drinks. So sodas, beers, alcohol, the sweet coffees and condiments, the stuff that you put on your food when you're ready to eat it. So if you're like lathering everything in barbecue sauce or like this uh, teriyaki sauce, you know what? Hey, man, it tastes delicious, but it's you got to look at see how much calories in that how much sugar is in it because there's a disgusting amount of sugar granted that's why it's so sweet and that's why it's so tasty but there's a lot of sugar there's a lot of salt and the amount that's in a serving is so much smaller than what we you usually would put on it's like why would i even put that on if a serving which i don't know is like a tablespoon and like let's just say that you lather that stuff yeah, you're having a lot more calories than you thought you would if it was just a lower calorie meal. Now, the second reason is that you're not moving as much as you used to. Oh, my metabolism slowed down because I've gotten older. Um, my, and since I've gotten older, my metabolism has slowed down. So I can't digest the food like I used to. And that like uh, I can't I can't take off weight as much as I used to. Well, maybe you're just not moving around as much. You're not moving around as nearly as much as you used to. And that's probably the reason why. How much are you moving in a day? Now, for me, this uh, Apple Watch here, it helps me track my steps. Um, if you don't have a watch, most smartphone devices have a little step count in there and track how much, how many steps you're taking. Now, I know that in the iPhone app, there, or in the health app in the iPhone, you can actually see what your average step count is from month to month and from year to year actually if you've had an iphone long enough which most people have if you don't have an iphone you have a samsung and vice versa 
And if you have a flip phone, then good for you for staying in the past. Check and see how many steps you're taking. And if and you see the average steps that you're taking this year is a lot lower than last year or a lot lower in years past, that can be a big indicator that it's like, well, it may not be my metabolism. My metabolism is actually fine. It's just I'm not nearly as active as I used to be. Uh, this happens all the time. And this quarantine, this uh, this year of 2020 has kind of shown me a lot of what people do as far as uh, when they don't move around and they're eating whatever they want and they don't know what they're putting in their bodies they can tend to gain weight now if you used to play a sport and now you're not um, if you used to walk a lot or bike a lot or bike to work walk to work or you were in school and you were walking across campus you were just moving around more and then you go from that to a standard nine to five desk job where you're not moving and walking around nearly as much, you're taking a car, you're taking a cab, and mostly like the year 2020, uh, you've been staying at home and things have been closed down. So you haven't been able to go out and about and walk around as much as you want to, or as much as you used to, and you're working from home. So your footprint, your, your steps that you take, the amount of movement and activity that you used to do, the gym closures, it's gonna be a lot less than it you used to. So when you're not moving around as much, your non-exercise activity uh, thermogenesis, we're just gonna say neat. It's gonna be a lot lower than it used to be. So your metabolism is actually really smart and it adjusts to your new level of activity, which is a lot lower. So you meet, so what that means is that you need a lot less calories than you used to. But the issue is people have been moving around a lot less, but they've been eating the same amount, or even they've been consuming a lot more calories than what they usually do. Like again, ordering out more often, having more drinks on the weekend. It's very common to see something where it's like, okay, low, so you're lowering your activity and you're consuming more calories. So you're saying, well, I'm gonna just drop my calories to this much because I know that when I was in shape uh, before that this was the calorie amount that I usually went to and I lost a lot of weight super quickly and now I'm doing it again and it's not happening as fast. So I guess my metabolism, uh, I guess I could just say that my age, is, you know, if you're blaming it on your age, Maybe look at the other aspects of your life. How often are you moving now than you were back then? Are you move, or are you as active as you were as you were younger? Granted, the whole entire thing of my age slows my metabolism. That's only true because you're getting older and the amount or the amount of activity that you do is a lot less when you're older than when you were younger. When we're kids, think about when we're kids and we're playing on the playground, we're running around everywhere. We're jumping, we're climbing, or we're chasing, we're playing tag, we're playing dodgeball, we're playing basketball, soccer, football, whatever. You're doing all this stuff and your like your metabolism is just firing off because you're just doing so much activity that like your body is just consuming stuff and that's the that whole entire thing of the never ending pit because you're just moving around so much. Granted, when you start to not move around nearly as much as when we start to see more of a weight gain. Those are two main reasons why we gain weight and we can't get it off. One, like I said earlier, it's the amount of calories. We underestimate our amount of calories. And two, we, uh, we overestimate our energy levels and our activity level or that our activity level also goes way down and hence we don't need nearly as much food as we're consuming. Now with those two things in mind, what I want to suggest to you is that one, like I've said in many other videos, move around more. And what I mean by that is that I don't mean like you need to go and do a 5k tomorrow. Start out by doing a 10 minute walk. Start being a little bit more conscious of your activity level and make some improvements, small improvements every single day to try to move around a little bit more than you did yesterday. Start to get to a place where you were moving as much as you did when you were younger, when you were more active. My main thing for you is to be more active. That is a simple way to put it. Doing something uh, that's fun for you. So going on a bike ride, if that's something that you wanna do. If you like to do body weight workouts, go ahead and do it. Um, I know that a lot of gyms are closed, Granted, here in California, there is, or here in Southern California, there are still some outdoor gyms that are open. So you can go ahead and look around and 
work out outside uh, stuff find something that's a find an activity where you're going to exert some energy and again at first it doesn't need to be a lot what i'm just trying to get at is find something that you like to do that's active and then do more of that and again start small and then progressively get or progressively do it for longer and longer and longer and eventually you'll be an active person so also changing your mindset from being i'm not an active person to i am an active person just that small little small little mind shift can actually go a long way because you're like well what would a fit person do or what would an active person do in this situation given the choice between sitting on the couch or going on a walk find out how much or looking at where your calorie intake actually is and where um, and how much you actually do need to maintain. So what you can actually do is you can go onto Google, type in TDEE calculator, and then put in your numbers, your height, your weight, your age, and then your activity level, which again, if you're staying at home more often and you know you're not active as you usually are, probably go on the lighter side, a uh, lighter side of activity or even sedentary, um, and then to put in your numbers and they will uh, like it will calculate what is your calorie intake that you should be intaking just to maintain from there go ahead and subtract a couple or subtract about 500 calories standard calorie uh standard calorie deficit and weight loss and you will be on your way now what what are some other tips i could say as far as nutrition wise find uh, find high or like eat high volume, low calorie foods. What do I mean by that? Focus on eating a good amount of vegetables and fruits. Uh, try to go with the lower calorie dressings. Try to go with like lower calorie wraps and breads. And if that's what you want to do, find foods that are lower in calories that you can stock up on so that you still feel full when you're eating less calories. What I would like to, or what I would suggest doing is have like a, have a food journal, write down everything that you're consuming, just to see an idea of actually how much food you are consuming and how many calories that you are actually intaking, right? Because that's the whole entire thing is that for, in order for us to go where we need to go, we need to understand where we're at. And then from there, we can have a better understanding of what our starting point is so that we can go forward and get to our goals. Anyways, I hope that that is helpful for you guys. That is it for my video on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. If you are new, please press that subscribe button. And if you are just a returning uh, viewer, thank you so much for coming back and joining me. I appreciate you guys so much. And uh, until then, I will see you guys in the next one. Later.